Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. Our acolyte today is Theo Shook. Thank you, Theo. We would like to offer a warm WCC welcome to choir members from Macomb Solel Lakeside Reformed Jewish Community in Highland Park. Welcome choir members. We also welcome today organist Nick Pershey. Our choir members sang this past Friday night at the Shabbat services at Macomb Solel Lakeside Reformed Jewish Community. And today we welcome their choir to this interfaith choir experience today. We also welcome guests that you'll hear from a little bit later. Uh, the first is Tracy McKeithen. Tracy, we welcome you and your daughter Trinity, who are here today. Uh, Tracy is executive director of Family Promise, an old partner and friend of Winnetka Congregational Church. We also welcome representatives from Building Peaceful Bridges. You'll also be hearing from them a bit later in today's service. The co-founders of Building Peaceful Bridges are Lori Lucchetti, who, whom I will interview during the sermon time today, and Alam Mahmoud. Alam is not able to be here today, but there's a book about Alam's life. Uh, it's called A Disappearance in Damascus. It's written by Deborah Campbell. This book will be available at the tables uh, in the Neo-Narthex after the service today. Uh, this book is about the, uh, Alam's disappearance during the Arab Spring turmoil in Syria in the early uh, 2010s in that area. And the journalist, Deborah Campbell's efforts to find Alam, and it's a fascinating book. It's available for $20 if you're interested in the neo-narthex. Also with Lori today is a friend of our church, also an important part of, uh, of building peaceful bridges, and that's Nikki Nair. We welcome you, Nikki. And uh, also, remind me of your name? Lexi. Lexi, who's the volunteer coordinator for building peaceful bridges. We also are glad to welcome you. On April 28th, a couple of weeks from today, community youth group will meet here. It's a number of churches, high school youth groups coming together to do things more together than we can do them uh, separately. They're, they are collecting hygiene kits that will be assembled that evening, and the shopping list for those hygiene kits is available also at the shopping cart in the Neo-Narthex. These hygiene kits will be passed along to the harbor, uh, a, sh a shelter for youth in Park Ridge. At our church's annual congregational meeting after worship on May 5th, which is only three weeks from today. Am I right? Is my math right? Uh, one of the important business items will be voting on the proposed vision for Winnetka Congregational Church's future. The final version of the plan will be sent via email after the church council looks at it this coming Tuesday. We are looking on May 5th for not just a reluctant yes or a eh, sort of yes, I guess so. We are looking on May 5th for a resounding, enthusiastic yes by members of our congregation to this vision plan. Thursday's messenger included the voices of three vision team members, each expressing why they are voting yes enthusiastically. Today, right now, you're going to hear from one other person who is also adding his enthusiastic yes, and that is Chuck Doubting. Most importantly, though, I'm wildly enthused. 
enthusiastic about the vision plan's spiritual direction that is based upon the life and teachings of Christ. This is an excellent path to reach out to the increasingly large number of those seeking inner peace and life's purpose, but not institutional religion. So that's the first one. The second version is what we have What matters most is not learning how to think, but learning what to think about. My engineering college dean used to express it a little differently than that. He would say, it's not about solving the problem correctly. It's about solving the correct problem. The vision plans focus on spirituality based upon the life and teachings of Christ. Provides an excellent lens for learning what to think about for those seeking inner peace and life's purpose, but not as a Christian Now, spoiler alert, I borrowed the what to think about one the wildly popular 2005 Kenyan College graduation address by David Foster Wallace, and I recommend highly that you listen to this. Thank you very much. Pastor Allen has a quick announcement about another mission opportunity later this year. What better day to do this than on Mission Sunday? Um, one of our church members, Xerxes Boot, is creating an interfaith travel experience to the ancient world heritage city of Antigua, Guatemala, to support the mission of Project Common Hope. Some of you are very familiar with this. For, for over 20 years, members of our church have traveled to Common Hope and Antigua. They've been inspired by the ministry that began with two school teachers that houses, feeds, educates, improves the life of those living in and around Antigua. Xerxes and others have made this trip many times, especially Xerxes, he has a love for it. And our mission doing committee is supporting this trip as a way for WCC to reconnect to this great project that we've had history with, this impactful ministry, which we have such great confidence in. If you're interested, please talk with me after worship or contact me by email that is on the church website, uh, winnetkacongregationalchurch.org. The date for this event is November 10th through 16th. Thank you, Alan. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you went there yourself. I went here with Marla, and it was, it was life-changing for both of us, and uh, we'd love to go back sometime. Thanks. I invite you now to breathe in the Spirit, however you envision that or understand it, the divine presence that's always within us, among us, immediately accessible but too easily ignored and forgotten. Breathe in the divine Spirit. Breathe out hope and peace and joy.
You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Dear Holy One, Resurrected One, in this time of worship, come close to us until your thoughts are our thoughts, your heart our hearts, your hands our hands, and all that we have and all that we are and all that we do will be a reflection of you and for your love for all. Amen. I invite you to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before children come forward for the children's time, I'm going to make a very strange but sincere request that if you are wearing shoes that have laces, unlace them. Is that the right word? Uh, is that the word? Untie them. I, English is my first language, really. If they have Velcro straps, unstrap them. If you have slip-on shoes with no straps or laces, take them off and come forward. This will make sense to you, believe me. And last week at confirmation class, I asked some of our confirmants to help us. I know, Caitlin, you said you would help at this time. Caitlin, you can do the same thing. Oh, you need to bring, sorry, you need to bring your shoes with you. I didn't say that. Bring them with you if you're taking them off. Finn, you're welcome to come forward too. If Sammy's here, she's welcome. Come on. Oh, Sammy, there you are. Just, you just got, you just got uh, ratted out by your dad. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to loosen my, I'm going to untie, that's the word, untie my laces. Okay. How are we doing? Anybody else want to join us? Here we come. Here's one more. You're waiting for one more? Okay, here's Wyatt. Wyatt's got laces. Something tells me running with laces un, you know, untied is not a good idea. Good morning. How are you? Uh, we're forgetting You're forgetting someone? There's someone else? Your sister? But <laughs> sister can come if sister wants. There she is. And if she, oh, and, and I see. <laughs> Those are some serious straps you got going on, sister. No, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll strap them up later. Yeah, that's the whole point. Okay, good morning. So, um, what are some things that you can do? What are some things that you can do? What are some things that you can do? No, not with the shoes, just in life. What are some things that you can do? What are some things you can do? Build. What? Build Legos. Build Legos? What, I know there's something you can do, Miss Caitlin. Uh, play volleyball. What can you do? Play lacrosse. What, say it again? Play lacrosse. Play lacrosse. What can you do? What can you do? Sammy, I know there's at least one thing you can do. Figure skate. Figure skating. You can do more things than that. Finn, what can you do? Perform. Perform. I'm shocked. <laughs> Wyatt, what can you do? Eat an eight-foot burger. Eat an eight-foot burger. Thank you. But even though everybody can do something, nobody can do everything. Is any of you able to do everything that could possibly be done? Yeah, I forgot. I so forgot that uh, Theo has alien powers. So <laughs> theoretically, yes, Theo can do everything. But none of you, except maybe Theo, can actually like drive a car yet. I hope. Although you're getting really close, Sammy. Okay, do you know what? Even grown-ups can't do everything. Even grown-ups can't do everything. And you thought we were, we were the superpowers ones, right? Even Jesus couldn't do everything, and he had helpers. Jesus had helpers. And now that Jesus doesn't walk the earth anymore, guess who Jesus' helpers are? Us. We are Jesus' helpers. So now that you've taken your shoes off or unlace them, like Wyatt and me, oh, and also Finn. I would like you to help your neighbor put on their shoes. Don't put on your own shoes. This might take a while. <laughs> because this is one way of showing how we can help people. It's not like the usual things we can do to help people. What are some of the things you can usually do to help other people? What's an example, Wyatt? When someone's bleeding, you can bring them a Band-Aid. Thank you. Or if it's really bleeding, you can apply a tourniquet. Oy. I'm just my, you know, addition there. Theo, what can you do to help people? Be kind. Be kind. So simple, but so important. 
What else can you do to help people? So many things we can do to help people. Caitlin? Be kind. Be, kind. Be gentle. Okay. Help your neighbor, find a neighbor, and tie their shoelace, or help them into their shoes, or help them strap their shoes on. One, two, three, go. Remember, we have, we have pastor's laces that need help. Oh, Theo, you don't have a helper? Let me be your helper. This one. Good. And the right one. Good. Excellent. Yes. Sometimes when we try to help people, we can actually end up injuring them. Yes. Yes. Un the law of unintended consequences. Good, good, good. Oh, we need some help here. Good. You're helping each other. That's lovely. How about... Oh, this is... You're, you're, strapped, you're still strapped in. Oh, it's a strap, but it's actually Velcro. Velcro. We didn't have Velcro when I was growing up in 1938. <laughs> oh wait, this is yours. Here's yours. There you go. How are we doing? Who's helping you? You're helping yourself? That's good too. Let me help you. Right foot. Nice, nice, nice. Strapped in. Are we all strapped in? Nobody did yours? Oh, I Nobody did mine? His. You were going to do his? But the, you were scared of having Wyatt do your laces? Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Ugh. All right. Is everybody laced up? I'm not, but don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. All right, go just, uh, you can go to church school now if you'd like with Mrs. Brown through the north door. And we have some visitors today. Is it okay, Dad, if they go to church school? Uh, it seems to be too late anyway. All right. another post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. It is similar to post-Easter accounts found in Matthew and John. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seen a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, 
as you see that I am. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of roast fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, Christ among us. This post-Easter story of Jesus reminds us that even for the earliest Christians, there was a close connection between the living, renewed presence of Christ after Good Friday and the big question, what's, what's it all about? So what? What are we supposed to do with this news that Jesus is not dead but alive? The answer in the early church wasn't so much about belief, it was more about action. If Jesus is alive for Christians, that means the whole way we approach life is now different, and that we are to regard the presence of the living Christ as a motivation to go and do what Jesus did, namely to change the world, not merely reform it, but to change it, to bring hope where there's hopelessness and life where there seems to be nothing but decay and death, to make a difference in the world, to bring healing and to provide shelter for people who don't have shelter, to provide peace in situations of conflict. This is what it means to actually take Easter seriously not just a thought in the mind, not only words on the lips, but actually in how we live our everyday lives. This account ends with the powerful words, you are witnesses to these things. You are witnesses to these things. Not a kind of witness that just is an observer, but a witness who actually is involved in the story to the extent that they're affected by it, and willing to take a lesson from the story and put it into action. Starting in Jerusalem, the text says, and then expanding throughout the world. Today, I'd like you to meet two people, each representing an agency. One is an old friend of Winneka Congregational Church, Family Promise. And I'd like to invite forward their executive director, Tracy McKeithen. Tracy, welcome back to Winneka Congregational Church. I know you've been here before, and we are very happy to have you back again. Thank you. We were at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, or more than a couple of weeks ago now, and I was there listening intently to your presentation to other pastors, thinking it would be so awesome to welcome Family Promise back to Winneka Congregational Church. Tell us a little bit about how Family Promise got its start. And we promise uh, Chicago North Shore, so we are one of over 200 networks of Family Promise. We started from a member of this church who lived uh, on the East Coast, and his job brought him to Illinois, and his family volunteered at the Family Promise in his home church. And when he got here at, uh, on the North Shore, he learned there was a need for shelter but there was not a family promise here. So he met with some others, started talking to clergy, and family promise was born uh, in 
2009. 2009? Yes. Yeah. Already more than 10 years ago, 15 years ago, in yes. fact. Yeah, good. What does Family Promise do? So we are a, a program that offers uh, shelter services and other outreach services to low-income families who are in a housing situation. So we do four things overall for our program. One, we have a rotational shelter where families are in our shelter program housed inside of various churches and synagogues on the North Shore. The second thing that we do and the most thing that we do is our homelessness prevention and shelter diversion program where we uh, work with families who are on the verge of becoming homeless by talking to their landlords, trying to uh, offer some mediation to help them stay in their homes. We also provide uh, community outreach and aftercare services for families who were homeless and who are living in the community. So that looks like workshops, uh, financial literacy training, um, other assistance that's available to them. And then the last thing we do uh, is about building community, bringing volunteers and families uh, together who otherwise probably would never meet. What an awesome work you do. I mean, this is what I was talking about, that this is, for Christ, from a Christian perspective, this is the risen Christ among us, Amen. doing good work in God's name. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention, uh, after our second speaker today, you will each get a paper form, very, very 20th century, I know, to paper form, where you'll be able to indicate your interest to learn more about uh, perhaps volunteering for either Family Promise or for building peaceful bridges, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we were a host church yes, for sir. Family Promise when I returned to WCC in 2017. In fact, I slept in this building at least two <laughs> nights up there as part of Family Promise. What would it mean for our church to become a host church once again? So just quickly, we, we have t-shirts that uh, volunteers wear and it says my pastor likes it when I sleep in church. <laughs> and so <laughs> so uh, to be a host congregation, uh, it takes volunteers who are committed to serving that program. It takes physical space, of about four rooms. So that is classrooms or Sunday school rooms. Sometimes it's offices that somebody can give up for a week or two, maybe two times a year to house those families. So um, the families would take that uh, unused Sunday school room or classroom. We would convert it to a bedroom. So um, typically right now, Sunday morning, beds would be moved into uh, a congregation where uh, each family has their own room for the week, so it's like their little studio apartment for the week. And then it would require volunteers in the evenings who would bring their children and grandchildren or, you know, a friend who would prepare dinner. And if that's your, if you make an amazing lasagna and that's what you're having for dinner tonight, make an amazing lasagna for the families of Family Promise and come and share that meal with them. And then after dinner, it's some fellowship, some relaxed time, as if you would at home. And then the families are off to their rooms for bed, um, and then they leave in early in the morning, and they come back the next evening. So it takes some committed volunteers who want to share their meal and their time with the families in the program. Can you estimate how many volunteers would be needed for a you said a one or two week period. Yes. I know at the meeting with the clergy, you mentioned that the, the model used to be one week. Yes. And now it's expanding to two weeks at a time, or is it still flexible? It is very much flexible. Um, we have some congregations that uh, we started out with congregations hosting one week, four times a year. We grew and we have so many congregations that that turned into one week, three times a year. So right now, it is one or two weeks, two or three times a year that they're hosting. So let's say it's one week. How, how many volunteers, roughly, would a church need for that one week of housing a family? So there is a coordinator that 
pulls it all together, assigns um, different volunteers to do different things. So that coordinator is that lead person that makes it happen. And then if there's seven nights of the week, so there's seven um, or 14 families or uh, sets of people who will host the meals that evening and interact with the families that evening. So that could be two or three people um, in the evening. It could be one person and their children in the evening. So it could be, it can vary from probably about 25 people for the course of the week. So this could be a family mission project. It, absolutely, and it is encouraged to be um, a family mission project. Right now in the shelter program, we have three families that are at the congregation, and they're all boys in, in the family. So uh, other families that have uh, young men, young boys in their families. I saw uh, a volunteer who emailed me just this morning that she's bringing her son to interact and uh, play games with the other boys that are in the program. So we encourage families to uh, support. Nice. And I remember at the clergy meeting, you, you also said that things have changed a bit, that uh, you used to require the church to provide that overnight s sleeping person to be on site. And that's changed a little bit. Yes. So there used to be a, a volunteer overnight that stayed in the congregation so that if they're was an emergency or something happened. So after COVID, we've hired staff. So there are paid staff from Family Promise that come in the evening. So after the dinner hosts leave, they are on site um, to work with the family. So they have a separate area and they're here for the night until the van leaves in the morning. Good. Anything else you'd like to add about the important ministry of Family Promise? So a lot of the families uh, back when this congregation used to host, families used to tell me in their own language that Winneka Congregational was the Mercedes Benz of <laughs> congregation. <laughs> and, and that was because you had a gym and right. in the bedrooms there were televisions on the wall and you know, other congregations didn't have. We have a shower. Yeah, and you have a shower, I remember that. So yeah, so those different things and um, you know, I would not know people from this congregation. I would have never been here if it had not been for this congregation and Family Promise coming together to make it happen. We have uh, families, a recent mom that moved into her apartment in February, and she wrote me a letter, and she wrote a letter to the congregations for me to share with them, and it was thanking those volunteers for showing up for her and for seeing her and not just providing meals and providing dinner, but having that conversation to sit down with her. So she reminded me that our families that we serve are people too, and that it's important that we see them when we're interacting with them and sharing a meal with them. That sounds like the risen Christ to me. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank and you. Tracy will be available at a table in the Neo Narthex afterwards if you'd like to speak some more with her. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. And I'd now like to invite Lori Lucchetti forward. Lori's a co founder of Building Peaceful Bridges. I first heard about building peaceful bridges from one of our members, uh, Carol Jansen, who was one of your early supporters. Uh, you've only been around five years, Correct. but tell us a little bit about how B building peaceful bridges started. Building peaceful bridges started when I met Akbam, who's the co-founder. And I was at a scripture Bible studies group, and she was there because she was a friend of the host, and she was helping with her grandson and she told her story of being a refugee from Iraq and coming to the United States. So I opened my house to have monthly lunches and I invited friends of mine who were retired from work and had many skills in that and Akbam invited refugee families. And we all sat around the table and food brings people together, that's for sure. My Italian background makes sure I had and it was joyful because we realized there were more similarities than differences with people from all around the world in that who were refugees. Mm -hmm. And we looked at each other and said, well, why don't we do this? If not me, who? 
and we took a global issue, forced migration, and addressed it at a local level. And we started in 2018. And you're based in Glenview? Yes. And well, it's kind of, we don't have a formal place because mm -hmm. we put all the donations and that into our programs. And um, we are eventually get housing, but right now, yes, it's Glenview, but it's all over the North Shore. North Shore, for generally. Volunteers, correct. Sounds everywhere. like you were kind of interfaith also in your orientation from the beginning. Right. The mission that we set was for all faiths and all cultures and to do two things, to help those who are newcomers to integrate into America. I know the congregation Hakafa, with whom we share our building many right. occasions, uh, is also a, a partner and supporter. Yes, yeah. yes, Rabbi Bruce is very close with us in that. Great. What do you do? Um, we decided that we would have a vision that is bridging the hearts and minds of all people. And we, our mission is two sides of a coin. One is to help the newcomers integrate, which we have teams of people that help. And the other side is to educate fellow Americans and our neighbors on the refugee story, the asylee story. You know, how did they get here? What are they trying to help here and make community here? Um, so we established four programs. One is a mentoring program, which people can sign up for. And we have teams of four or five people that help families and they'll go and visit, they'll commit for about six months at least, and visit the families weekly. And it's a real gift to be in there with them and see the joy because they're new and people are coming in to find out about their lives. And then we tutor the kids academically or some of the wives on English. We also sponsor families if they need rent assistance, if they need food help um, from coaching of financial things because our systems are very different than any in the rest of the world in that. So mm -hmm. they're learning. And then we have an, a Bridge to Belongings program, which we have a free store in Wilmette. Um, Father Watts from St. Francis St. Joe's gave us a couple of floors in the empty convent. So there's abs their clothing, there's household items, and we're starting a bookshop so the kids can come in and take books and actually build the reading program. And then the other side, there's educational. And we have learning luncheons where we invite guests to talk about various immigration issues. And we have a book club that is three times a year with the author on various stories, like Akalam's story. And um, we do advocacy work. We work with other coalitions at the national, state, and local level to improve the immigration policies in our country. Good. And I know we've all already hosted two Building Peaceful Bridges events at our church. One was in November. Correct. To help refugee families learn about that unique American celebration called yes. Thanksgiving. Right, right. And then just a few weeks ago, at the beginning of Ramadan, we had, we, you, your agency put on an iftar. Right. And we were pleased to be the host, and we had 120 or 30 yeah, 130 people downstairs people <laughs> or running around yeah. our building it was awesome it was great and we thank you again for allowing us to host that and um, one of our families the Nair family hosted it too and we invited you know you spoke Rabbi Bruce spoke and the imam spoke and that's our goal of bringing everyone together Lovely. and so what would a volunteer do you, you mentioned mentoring. Yeah, volunteers can mentor, join a team. Um, our volunteer coordinator recruits them and deploys them, trains them. They get training before they go. And there's always a senior mentor with you when you're starting. And it's a commitment of a couple of months to a family. So you could do that. You could work in the Bridge to Belongings shop called the Rosemary Gabriel shop and sorting clothes or being there with a the family shop and that. Um, getting additional donations in. Um, then we have events like the Iftar event. There were a lot of the volunteers that helped that night, especially in the gym. The kids had a ball. Yeah. Thank you, Lori, for your work, for your vision, for your cooperation across faiths to make this the Im thank impactful you, ministry Jeffries. it is. Yeah, and thank you to your church for inviting us. Of course. And uh, Lori and her colleagues will also be at a table in the Neo Narthex right after ser service. This sounds like the risen Christ to me. Thank you, Lori. <clears throat>
I'm asking our ushers now to hand out the green indication of interest forms. Um, if this is not a commitment, of course, it's an indication of interest. And there's a place there for you to indicate family promise. You can indicate building peaceful bridges. You can indicate both. And for those of you watching online, uh, there is a QR code that should be popping up on your screen right now. Just take a picture of that, and it will take you to the same form that the people in our sanctuary are filling out right now. Also, if you in the sanctuary would prefer uh, to use the QR code, the QR code is also repeated in the bulletin itself on the final page. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you would like to return your form today, and we hope you will, please put it in the offering plates that'll be passed in a moment. It's always better to leave a form that you give to people the day that you give it to them, because I know what happens to papers that go home with every good intention of coming back to the school or the church or wherever it is. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So it'd be great if you're willing just to indicate your interest, put your name, email, and phone number so we can connect you with these ministries.
You may be seated. This morning, I'm going to invite you to join with me in a series of bidding prayers. After each petition, I will say, Lord, hear us in our silence, and then there will be a moment of silence. May we use those times of silence to know God's presence and to share in the prayer that's been lifted up. The Lord be with you. To God, we pray in this season of Easter for the assurance that every ending in life and in all the changes of our lives, there will be through you a new beginning. Lord, hear us now in this moment of silence. Let us pray for those who work to bring peace and justice and healing in the lives of others and in our divided world. Especially today, we lift up before you your servants of family promise and building peaceful bridges. We pray for them and all whom they serve. Lord, hear us in our silence. Let us pray for parents who daily make sacrifice and care for their children and seek the wisdom to do only what is loving and best. Lord, hear us in our silence. Let us pray for those who have died, that God's light may shine on them into perpetuity. Lord, hear us in our silence. Let us pray for all who have lost a loved one to death. Lord, hear us in our silence. On this day when people of Israel have been under attack and there is fear and insecurity, and the danger of escalation of war in the Middle East, let us pray for what seems impossible. Let us pray for peace. Let us pray for the well-being of all people on all sides of this conflict and other conflicts, that God's vision of justice and peace may become a reality. Lord, hear us in our silence. O God of salvation, your glory shines throughout the world to bring joy to your people. Hear our prayers and grant us your all-powerful grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To receive food and drink from our Creator and to withhold it from others is blasphemous. God freely gives from God's abundance then let us freely give from our abundance. I invite the ushers to come.
Let us pray. In our offerings, O oh God, we proclaim that what we say we believe is what we will do. We proclaim our worship and our work are one. We proclaim that life is undivided. Amen. One more time, I'd like our guests and also Trinity and others from our agencies to come forward and join me here at the front because I want you to walk with me out this door to go to the Neo-Narthex before you get caught in the maddening crowd. <laughs> if you didn't turn in your form but you would like to, you can certainly give it to me or Pastor Allen. Uh, those of you online, you can also, if you weren't able to do the QR code but want to indicate your interest, uh, you can also just email Patty Van Cleve, our Executive Director of Operations, patty at winnecacongregationalchurch.org, and she will set you up. In your bulletins is the uh, benediction that we offer together every week. Together. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good, return no evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, all people, as you love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>